and hello welcome YouTube and welcome to this video of turbulence modeling we've gone through a fair bit of Reynolds average universe tools RENs or LES models I mean RENs and LES models large eddy simulations we've gone through a number of them already so in this part this segment of the turbulence modeling I want to discuss hybrid RENs LES methods okay Reynolds average universe tools and LES methods why do we want to do so so uh, you may know, for example, we have this wall adapting the wheel model, which we just discussed, Osma Gorinsky. Osma Gorinsky. Okay, the wheel and the Osma Gorinsky model. Um, a wheel model is very good for wall modeling. All right, it's very good for near wall behavior, even of complex shapes. Now, uh, yes, uh, wheel modeling is very accurate, um, as, at least compared to Smagorinsky and uh, Smagorinsky model. And you don't, you don't need to test the, the strength of LES. The strength of LES, no need. The ideal thing is that you don't need to test. Uh, test the model empirically. All the time. What do I mean? Okay, so I'll put empirically there all the time. What do I mean? Well, if you remember the Reynolds average Navier Stokes, for example, um, let's say you have a pipe flow, you try to use your k omega SST model here. All right, or some other Reynolds average Navier Stokes, you will get some constants. You calibrate it for some constants. All right, you try and calibrate it for some constants. And if you're trying to apply this, for example, to say airfoils, airfoils or wing flow, and you try to use these same constants uh, to model like flow over a wing, for example, okay, or maybe flow over a flat plate, uh, yeah, a flow of a flat plate where you have this boundary layer happening. Uh, the caveat is that it may not work. Caveat is that it may not work for this. I mean, these constants may not be universal. Okay, so the strength, I mean, of LES ideally in general. That's why we go, uh, went through all the trouble of uh, wheel or dynamic K equation is that you want a model that you don't have to uh, say, okay, I've tested this model and calibrated it for pipes, so therefore I can only use the model constants with pipes. And if I want to do it for wings, I will need to perform another round of experiments and calibrate the constants for wings. And then if there's some other complex flow geometry, for example, let's say a heat exchanger, for example. If you have a heat exchanger, the thing is that you will have lots of pipes, okay, with some fluid flowing uh, inside them, all right? Some fluid flowing inside them. So in a cross, uh, uh, you have a heat exchanger here. So if a heat exchanger here, you try to do this uh, modeling for heat exchanger. Um, well, if you use this uh, Reynolds average Navier-Stokes, you may get a result, but it may not be giving you the correct, uh, the correct, uh, uh, what do you call that? The correct um, heat transfer coefficient, for example. So the thing about using LES modeling is that you try to model the flow physics rather than just shove in empirical constants so les the aim is accuracy whereas for this this is more of a speed there's an emphasis on speed okay and the model here is empirical whereas for les in general the model here is semi-empirical what do I mean by semi-empirical? It means that yes, you have to calibrate 
uh, LAS using some tests. But because you try to model the physics of the flow accurately, you can apply the physics from one side. For example, ideally, you, you test your LAS using a pipe flow. Uh, if you capture all the physics correctly, if you capture the flow physics correctly, okay, if you have the flow physics, flow physics, Okay, if you capture that flow physics correctly, uh, you should, in theory, be able to model heat exchanger flow without testing too much. Of course, at the end of the day, you should still test and verify with respect to uh, DNS, uh, direct numerical simulation, or even experimental flow. That is ideal. But the strength of LES is that it does not need as much power, computing power as DNS, but can still capture most of the flow physics, so you can so-called reasonably trust the results that it gives you better than say this k omega sst uh, if you just copy and paste the same model or even reynolds average navier stokes for example so okay but no model is perfect of course um, and the price you pay for accuracy the price you pay for accuracy is that you need a very very fine mesh in order to resolve every single eddy in between, let's say, these uh, heat exchanger pipes, for example. You need a very, very fine mesh. And with a fine mesh, uh, it will have uh, high computing power, right? High computing power. So there, there, there uh, lies our problem. Uh, I mean, you can do this with supercomputers, but uh, I mean, is there is there a way we can reduce this computing power required? Because this ultimately translates into time required. Time required. And of course, uh, some money as well, but uh, time is of the uh, essence, especially in this age where you have very powerful computers. Uh, I mean, and you can get them at your school or research or even, I mean, uh, Laptops, I mean some laptops they can do very well if you have a small enough grid I mean if you have a small enough domain for example if your domain is very small and your grid size is coarse enough you can still use your laptop but uh, you still need to spend a lot of time so more likely is the time required that's the problem and that's the, that's the deal with LES it's more accurate at least in theory, uh, if you have a well well uh, done LES model, it's more accurate than K Omega SSD, and you can like shift the LES models from uh, simple geometry to complex geometry, and ideally, it should still be able to give you all the correct flow physics and the correct heat transfer coefficient, wash shear stress, etc., etc. Well, um, yeah, so you, so. Um, yeah, that's the price you pay is the high computing power. Okay, so we want to reduce the computing power uh, of LES modeling, right? We want to reduce computing power. Reduce computing power. So uh, how do we do so? Well, if you, if you notice in like most simulations, okay, well, in your turbulence, you have large eddies, you have small eddies, all right, medium, large, and small. And usually, uh, near the wall is where you need to keep track of smaller eddies, right? Near the wall, near wall, you need to keep track of smaller eddies. Keep track of smaller eddies okay so you need to keep track of smaller eddies at the wall so you need a very very fine mesh in order to get the correct resolution of eddies and so that for example your wheel equation the uh, the wall adapting local eddy viscosity equation for example this will work you still need a very fine mesh okay but uh, 
in like the main flow in the free region we call it the like the bulk flow I'll just call it the bulk flow for now in the bulk region most of the eddies here are large you can afford to use coarser grids coarser grids and even with coarser grids LES tends to outperform Reynolds average Navia Stokes okay let me zoom out and give more space All right, so this will outperform Reynolds average Navier Stokes. LES will outperform Reynolds average Navier Stokes in the bulk region, for example. However, um, most of the computing power is where the mesh is the smallest, which is over here. Over here, you will find this that uh, Reynolds average Navier Stokes, because it's uh, derived uh, empirically, you have empirical wall functions when I mean empirical I mean it's uh, verified with experiments uh, these wall functions so ten tendency is that um, Reynolds average Navier Stokes for example the K Omega model or the K Omega SST shear stress transport all of these actually do better in the wall region why because uh, you have you have good accuracy, reasonable accuracy, and you have low computing power. Low computing power. You don't need as much computing power in the wall region if, let's say, you use Reynolds average Navier Stokes. So the hybrid, the hybrid model is to help each each uh, type of model uh, play play uh, to its strengths so the idea is this okay I will go here for example you have this region uh, the wall boundary layer near the boundary layer on the wall you prefer to use Reynolds average Navier Stokes here and then you prefer to use LES here in the large region. Using Reynolds average Navier Stokes ensures accuracy in the wall at the wall and also ensures low computing costs okay and using LES in the bulk layer you will have reasonable computing costs because uh, you don't need very fine grids there okay you have reasonable computing costs and good accuracy that comes from LES good accuracy all right so you have good accuracy in the bulk region now one of the other names you often hear is called free shear region free shear region and this is of course the wall region so I won't use the term bulk region anymore I will call it free shear region because this is often a name you would hear in literature so what is a free shear layer free shear region for example uh, it means there is some shear stress going on okay but it's not exactly very near a wall it's far away from the wall that's why you call it free free means far from walls or far from surfaces okay shear means there is some velocity gradient over here okay so the idea behind hybrid modeling is this okay you use Reynolds average Navier Stokes in the wall region LES in the free shear region okay so hybrid models okay 
I mean, there are a few approaches you can do this. Uh, one is very closely related to uh, what you see here, over here, where you, you try and tell the code, all right? I have a free shear region. I have a free shear region here. And then I have a wall region here. Okay, the free shear region, I would say, okay, I want to take this, this, this block of space. I want to say, I'll tell the computer, hey, I want to do LES here. I want to do LES here. Then I'll tell the computer explicitly, in this region, I want to do uh, Reynolds Average Navier Stokes. Okay, what this is called, is called zonal. Okay, this is one of the most intuitive ways to think about this modeling. This is called zonal decomposition. Okay, so basically the zonal decomposition is I divide, I divide my simulation into zones explicitly, and then I tell them, hey, I, I, I want uh, LES in this free shear region, and Reynolds average Navier Stokes for uh this wall region now of course uh it's good uh but uh of, like for example if you have again this heat exchanger set up where you have a, a bit of flow across a bundle of tubes and then uh how, how are you going to tell okay is this a shear region a free shear region or a wall region i mean obviously close to the spheres this is uh the wall, wall modeling Okay, I mean near near let's say this tube surface, uh, you have all this uh, wall modeling, which is good, but here is I don't know would you call it free a uh, free shear region because I mean all of this is pretty close to the wall, uh, or would you call this a, a wall region? I mean, uh, if if not this this whole if you call that if you call this part a wall region, pretty much the whole place of your tube bundle will be a wall region and that makes it you know that you have to use Reynolds average Navier Stokes throughout the whole domain and then it, that kind of defeats the purpose of using this hybrid model in the first place and if you do that I mean is it accurate I don't know um, you, you have to test and that's not what we want okay so that's that's one problem with this zonal decomposition for complex geometries it's a little bit difficult to subdivide into zones the other way is called, um, okay, if you remember our spectrum, all right? You remember our energy spectrum, where you have log of some kinetic energy versus, let's say, the log of uh, the wave number. Okay, so I think wave number, you call it K as well. So let's use E, K here, and you have a log of wave number wave number so I call it a K wave all right uh, so the other the other way is to okay I have this spectrum and okay let's let's do it let's do it this way we will have Reynolds average Navier Stokes doing this very large eddies you take care of this and then maybe you have LES and yeah, LES and the LES model will take care of these small eddies, small eddies, or smaller eddies. I mean, large is a, it's a relative term here. Okay, large is a relative term. So I will call this very large eddies. So sometimes uh, Reynolds average Navier Stokes is also called very large eddy simulation. Um, okay, it's called very large and eddy simulation, very uh, similar. Uh, and of course, the large eddies LES will kind of take care of it. The advantage is that okay, here you have uh, low computation costs. All right, uh, but since you want to uh, make it more accurate, you add the LES components to this Reynolds average Navier Stokes components to kind of make it more accurate and you add accuracy 
but uh, limited computer uh, limited computational cost all right so this is uh, based on the spectral uh, you know up the spectral view of uh, turbulence so you got to know your spectral modeling very well and this method is what some would call non linear disturbance equations so there's non linear disturbance equations okay so this this funny funny name it's usually given to this model all right uh, let's let's uh, save this this looks actually quite nice looks good uh, all right put this here all right so I'm gonna save okay so these are the first two the last one oops sorry the last one the last one we will call it all right um, I don't want I don't want to deal with you know when I don't want to deal with this spectral stuff and I don't want to deal with you know having to set certain boundaries as to which zone is LES which zone is Reynolds average navier Stokes and I don't want to have to decide what is the cutoff frequency and deal with all this frequency stuff uh, is there is there some way we can uh, build built in LES into the Reynolds average navier Stokes equations so can we uh, can we add LES to our Rand's equations? The answer is yes, and uh, so you you can modify. The idea is to modify Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations to give LES behavior. To give LES behavior in free shear. Okay, this is what some people will call universal modeling. Universal modeling. And here is where you would actually find one subcategory called detach. Eddy simulation. Or some people call it D E S. Okay, this is very very common in uh, fluid CFD codes and is one of the most successful ways to do this hybrid modeling. So I'm not going to talk too much about zonal or non-linear disturbance equations. I want to kind of zoom in more to DES. And in the next video, we'll talk about one of the first DES models that came about, which, uh, you know, we edit one of the Reynolds Average Navier Stokes model, the Spallot Almaras model, in order to give it uh, the uh, LES behavior in the the free shear regions, or they call it detached regions, because detached regions it means it's uh, far from the wall, it's detached from the wall, so to speak. So that's that's a uh, introduction to this uh, hybrid modeling. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.